We are here at uh, Auto Expo 2018. It's a, it's a very bright and sunny day. We are right outside hall number eight, here to meet uh, team M-Flux Motors, who uh, are basically launching India's first high-performance electric superbike. So this is a bike where pretty much most of the key critical elements have been uh, designed and executed in-house, and they are all made in India. So we are going to meet uh, Varun, Ankit, and Vinay. Uh, they are all uh, the co-founders of M-Flux Motors. Varun looks at engineering and tech, Ankit looks at operations, and Vinay is the head of design. So yeah, let's go there. It's been one and a half years since we have been working on this. Right. Uh, we have designed the whole bike in-house along with all the circuits which goes into this bike. The whole electric drivetrain is made in India in-house. You can see it on that side. Uh, we have displayed all our circuits and everything. So the reason why we came out with this bike was right now in the market there are not many electric vehicles and whatever electric vehicles are there are in the low end so their design is not so good their performance is not so good so what people assume is electric vehicles are boring and slow and uh, not good looking so we wanted to change that perception and we want to set the industry standard that yeah electric vehicles can be crazy electric vehicles can be good looking electric vehicles can perform better than their petrol uh, counterparts and that is what we have done with Mflux one right. here what you can see it's a it's a stunning design right. along with the stunning performance what we have tested till now uh, it's been really nice um, so, so when you said that electric vehicles can be better than ICE like in what ways can it be better well uh, in terms of uh, acceleration right. electric vehicles are superior to petrol vehicles right. The reason being, out of a motor, you get a flat torque curve, which gives you that advantage, that uh, edge over the like uh, over the petrol vehicles. Right. And in case of most of your driving, 95% of the time, you cannot test the top speed. Right. But you can actually test the acceleration at any point in, inside the city, uh, uh, first of the red light, anywhere. Right. So that is what we focused on, and now. Uh, in case of electric vehicles, you can uh, have a much better start as compared to petrol vehicle, and that is what matters. So I guess acceleration is one. Well, what about maintenance? What about servicing? How does it so, differentiate? In terms of maintenance, uh, you believe that the maintenance cost on this bike will be less than half of what you pay for a petrol bike, and that too only the tire wear and a bit of brake pad wear which is also less as compared to petrol bike because your brake pads are not used that often right. because you have regenerative braking. So once right. you leave the throttle, right. you recoup that energy back and put it into the batteries. Oh, wow, wow. So like, what, what, can this, what can this machine do? Like, how fast can it go? So we have limited the speed uh, to 200 kmph, right. uh, which is, I think, more than enough for most of the highways right. in India. Right. And uh, in terms of acceleration, it can do 0 to 100 in 3 seconds, what right. we already talked about. Right. And it can give you a range of around 200 kilometers if you are driving inside the city. Right. And on the highways, it depends on your speed. But if you are, so, uh, so when you said range, I, I saw something. I saw something called the warp charger. Yes. Right. So that's I understand a proprietary piece of technology that you guys have yes. developed in house. So what kind of a charger is it? Is it like a speed charger? Like what is so it's a fast that? DC charger. Right. Uh, so what happens is if you are, are driving inside the city, right. you can charge it at home. For that, you don't need very fast charging. Okay. But when you are on the highway, you want the bike to charge 
by the time you have coffee and have a break right. and for that we have developed a valve charger so there you can see a mock up of that valve charger right. uh, so how uh, so like how long say i'm totally empty i want to charge this bike up how long is going to take me so it will take you 36 minutes okay. to charge up to 80% wow. which will give you a 160 km range inside the city right, right. Or on the highways, uh, 120 if you are driving at a speed of 80 right, right. kmph. So now, okay, now let's talk about uh, uh, unit economics and pricing. So, like from a manufacturing perspective, like what's your view on the unit economics of bikes? And obviously, like you need to make this profitable, right? Effectively. So, is that something that's doable? Is it something that will only come with a rise in production? I mean, walk us through that. And secondly, I want to know from an end user perspective. From a pricing perspective, like I, I know that this bike is priced at around six lakhs, six lakhs on road, right? So how does it work for them in terms of total cost of ownership? Okay, so in terms of uh, the unit economics of the bikes, yeah. our uh, cost of production uh, is lower than the selling price. But once we take into account the development cost and the cost right. of tooling and everything. Right. It's actually more than what we are selling it for. Okay. So effectively, customers are getting a discount even on that price. Right. Um, and for six lakhs, you get a wonderful bike with dual disc brake in the front, with Brembo's as being standard, right. and single-sided swing arm, and all the other features which you won't find in any uh, bike from other brands, right. even the petrol bikes right. uh, in this segment. And uh, after all the performance upgrades, which is the ultra light carbon fiber body panels, your forged alloy wheels, which will help you shave some uh, time on the racetrack, right. as well as your all-in suspension, which are fully adjustable, rebound damping, uh, spring coefficient, as well as your pre-stress. Um, your uh, total cost goes to 11 lakhs, okay. which is still 11 lakhs on road, on which road, is right. still very price competitive as compared to other bikes out there in the market. Right, right. So, great. And so, so what's next? Like now that you are done with M Flux One, what's next for the company? So we are making another prototype of this, which we'll be testing for 1,000 kilometers. Right. And whatever will be our learnings, we will incorporate those small changes right. uh, to make eight beta prototypes, right. which we'll be testing for 40,000 kilometers right. before having the production version, which we, we will test for uh, 100,000 kilometers overall right. for the 10 prototypes we'll be making. So okay. at an average 10,000 kilometers per prototype. Right. And on the parallel, we will get the certification from ARAI. Right. And we'll, our first customer delivery will be in April of 2019. Okay, okay. So one final question. Nitin Gadkari says India will be an EV nation by 2030. How doable do you think that is? And what do you think are the big gaps that everyone, industry and government needs to work on? Okay. I think it's doable. Uh, the thing is there are some uh, some infrastructures uh, issues which we have to be solved, especially the charging points. Right. But if we look at the US, uh, they had uh, just 5,000 5, charging stations in 2011. Right. Now they have 50,000 in 2017 itself. Right. So that growth of charging station is actually very fast. Right. And in India, I foresee that will happen once right. the rule of electricity resale changes. The thing is, uh, right now, uh, if you do not hold a distributor license, you are not allowed to buy and re resell electricity, right. which right. needs to change because right. uh, if I have a charging station installed, I cannot give you electricity for free. Right, right. I need to charge you for it. Right. And if I do that, right. especially for other vehicles, which are not, say, I can give uh, free electricity for Influx One. But to make that business also a profitable business, right, I need right. to provide that electricity charging facilities right. to others like TBS, Kawasaki, and other companies, right? There I need to charge money from the customer. And okay. the Indian law doesn't do not allow that right now. Right. So that needs to change. But once that changes and once uh, uh, these startups come into the EV play and start taking market share from the bigger players, they will become uh, more focused towards the EV. Right now for them, they have to sell bikes. So it doesn't matter whether it's petrol bikes or uh, electric bikes. So they are uh, not coming out with those good products. But once we force them to, they will. Right, right, right. Great, thank you so much. Baron, Thanks a lot, Nikhil. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment and subscribe to Transfilm for receiving rich original news content from the world of business, finance, technology and our economy. Have a great day.